Practice and Research 3.1. As one of my um, independent projects, I looked at colour with my century textiles and I'd started to play around with ideas, um, primary colours, um, red, blue, yellow, still maintaining the red circle as I'd decided in um, Project 6 that this was going to be my icon, my symbol that I was going to use. And um, this has enabled me to research the circle um, as it stands alone and then make a continuation of this into these projects. <clears throat> what was important, I think, was now to start to have an understanding about colour, um, start to have an understanding about the colour red, start to about have an understanding of the primary colours that I'd started to use as a colour palette. Also as well, the colour of the... Um, acetate overlays with the meanings of um, yellow for memory and uh, pink overlays to um, brighten up black and white uh, language from books or the, the black and white text. So um, through research I looked into Joseph Albers and the interaction of colour. Now this was important, um, I've ordered the book um, to read but I went onto YouTube and um, looked at some of the exercises that you can actually follow through. And the, it was really interesting that um, Joseph Albers teaches you the, a theory of interaction of colour. There is fact and actual. Now, I would started to look at my work and look at my um, textile century samples and engaged in the fact that it's um, a fact that the circle is red. I'm using red, so that's a fact. When you um, put the red circle, and I did this um, exercise in my sketchbook, against a pale blue or a pale yellow and put them side by side, there is a theory of actual. Now, the actual theory can be an emotion. I saw it as a personal opinion of how do you see the red circle on those two different colours but sat next to one another. And it was quite interesting because it then started to, the viewer to question the shade and the tone of the colour red of the circle. So the circle might look either darker on one colour or lighter on the other. This then has... Uh, moved me into further research of the hues and the tones of red, which then has then instigated um, various pronunciations and words for the colour red, which I will be investigating further for final samples in Project 8. As mentioned previously, Project 7 and Project 8 are going to kind of merge together because I'm very close um, with a lot of connections um, with some of the sampling that I'm going to be producing. Some samples, still early stage samples, some samples are um, going to be final. Um, but I'm going to be really investigating um, lots of different things like the colour, like the tactility of the samples, hence making them sentry, and then how to manipulate these samples and then move forward and use the body as a platform, um, use the body as a, a platform to display and manoeuvre and manipulate and be a stranger to my own samples and make new investigations with them. But um, going back to the idea of the colour and century, to learn um, theoretically about colour um, has been um, new learning. It's been interesting new learning. And it's also, it's also started to make me think how I perceive colour on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I think we possibly don't realise how colour around us um, makes such an impact with things that we do, mundane things that we actually do, and, and how important colour really is. And I think colour... Um, within these projects that I'm um, evolving with the theme of dyslexia is playing um, a major role 
whether it be just the one colour of different shades of red or a multitude of colour um, with combinations of red. So it's going to be quite interesting um, to further investigate these ideas.